Hi, Bishop Frank Dupre here with another drive-by message for you. It's a great day, amen? Well, I'm getting ready to take off. I'm going to preach somewhere. And I want to give you a little bit of a preview of what I'll be sharing, where I'm at. I want to talk to you about vision for a moment. You know, God gives us vision for the things that he wants us to have in our life, for the things he wants us to do. And the vision that he gives us when it's from him is very powerful, very meaningful. And we have to guard it and guard ourselves about how we act and live so that we can see the vision come to pass. The Bible tells us in the book of Corinthians, one of the books of Corinthians, uh, it talks about Satan getting the advantage over us. It says, but we're not ignorant of his devices. And the devil has a couple of devices that are truly, really, really terrible. They're awesome. They, they kill, they steal, they destroy. And that's his job. That's what he wants to do. He wants to, as Jesus said, uh, I'm the good shepherd, but he's not. And he's out to steal, kill, and destroy. One of the main things he does is, and I'm going to use one little point, he uses distractions. Distractions get us off the vision. Got my blinker on. Distractions get us off the vision and get us looking at circumstances. And I want to use Peter as an example. We all know the example of Jesus is walking on water and they all cry out, it's a ghost. And then uh, Peter says, Lord, if it's really you, bid me to come. And Jesus says, come. And Peter steps out of the boat. And this is in a storm now. This is terrible circumstances. And he's focused on what Jesus has said to him, come. He's focused on Jesus walking on the water and he starts to walk on the water to Jesus. He's not even thinking. He's not thinking at all. He's acting completely and totally out of his spirit man in faith, hearing the word and acting upon it. But as he's walking, it says all of a sudden, it says, when he saw the wind and the waves, in other words, something happened and he became aware of his circumstances. His circumstances had not changed. They were the same as they were a minute before when he said, Lord, if it's you, bid me come. And Jesus said, come. Same circumstances, wind, waves, storm, everything. He's a fisherman. He knows the waters. He knows what can happen. He knows that lake, that Sea of Galilee. He knows in an instant you can be dead on that thing because of the way that the, the storms rise up and the way the water spouts and, the, and they're like cyclones on top of the water and how they, they strike so quickly. And he's walking on water and it says, but when he saw the wind and the waves, he began to sink. And the word in Greek there, when he saw the wind and the waves, when he saw the word in Greek, it says, when he became double-minded, when his mind was on two things and not one thing. If you have a vision from God, if you have something that God has spoken to you to do, if it's about having a business, if it's about um, planning an event, if it's about uh, your life's work, it's if, if it's about your career, if whatever it is, no matter what it may be, whether it's in your personal life, church life, ministry life, whatever it is, if he's given you a vision, you must stay focused on the vision. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, looking unto Jesus. We have to continually keep our eyes focused, not that we are not confessing there's wind and waves. They're there. They were there five minutes ago. They're there now. They'll be there again. But what we don't allow ourselves to do is become double-minded. When he saw, when his mind split into two opinions, when he began to falter and he began to have circumstances outweigh vision, he sunk. Same for us. If we allow the circumstances to outweigh our vision, we're sinking. That's it. All we can do is cry out, Lord, save me. So if you've got vision in your life, if something's happening in your life, and there are wind and waves, and there's turmoil, uh, pr problems, things like It could be for the loved one that, you, that you're praying for. It could be for a child that you have that is now hooked on heroin, and life is being destroyed, or she's become something that you can't even imagine and you have prayed and you knew God spoke to you and said, they're going to serve me. You hold on to the vision of God and you do not allow circumstances to outweigh the vision or else you're goner. And so are they. And so you hold on, 
looking unto Jesus. You worship, you sing songs, you magnify the Lord, you read the word of God, you pray, you talk to the Lord, you stay in fellowship. You, you know, who you stay with is who you become. Stay with people of faith, stay with people who are, and, now, and the worst thing you can do is get around radical, fanatical people. We're radical Christians, but we're not fanatical. We're not caught off on a tantrum. We're not on one particular bent or aspect of Christianity. We're focused on the full gospel of God. We're looking to see ourselves prosper and be in health as our soul prospers or at the rate that our soul prospers. So I don't want to get too far off. That's the message for you today on vision and distractions. Remember Peter, when he saw the wind and the waves, when he became double-minded, when a double-minded man prays, the Bible says, he, don't let him think he's going to get anything he's asking for because he's double-minded. So don't be double-minded. Be singular in purpose, singular in vision, and you will be successful in everything that God sends you to do. Amen. God bless you now. Enjoy your day in Jesus. God bless you.